worship service at Greenwood United Methodist Church in Greenwood, Florida, via YouTube and live audience. Let us pray. Amazing God, you call us today, just as you called the disciples on the day of Pentecost. You challenge and support us, revealing the brokenness of our community, giving us the peace that our world needs. You point us to the pain of the cross and then remind us of the joy of the resurrection. Transform us, O oh God, through the power of your Holy Spirit. Help us breathe deeply of the breath of life. Blow through our worship and change our lives forever. Amen. Today's message is coming from John chapter 15, verses 26 and 27. John chapter 15, verses 26 and 27. And scripture states, when the counselor comes, I repeat, when the counselor comes, whom I will send to you come from the Father, the spirit of truth, who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. And you also must testify, for you have been with me from the beginning, the word of God for the people of God. Today's message is titled, Believe and Speak Boldly in Jesus' Name. Believe and Speak Boldly in Jesus' Name. Let's get into this message. First, allow me to give a little background context about the first Sunday of Pentecost. I will start with Acts chapter 2 and then segue into today's scriptures. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now the question, what in the world happened to those disciples? Only 50 days before, they were huddled behind locked doors, trembling and afraid for their lives. But on the first Sunday of Pentecost, they were confronting crowds in public boldly proclaiming their faith. Only 10 days earlier, they stood with Jesus on the Mount of Ascension, wondering if he was still going to overthrow the Roman government, then left standing there, dazed and confused, looking into the clouds, wondering where Jesus had gone. And now they understood perfectly that Jesus' kingdom was never of this world. And they were on fire, burning up to tell the world about his heavenly kingdom. Still the question, what happened? What happened is that the Holy Spirit came upon them in power. Just as Jesus had promised, the counselor that Jesus had promised to send seven weeks before, before he died and rose again, when he had that last special conversation with his disciples in the upper room before he was betrayed and died. That was when Jesus told the twelve again from today's scripture, when the counselor comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the spirit of truth who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. It was the Holy Spirit poured out in power on Pentecost who made the disciples bold to speak that day. They believed, therefore they spoke. Let us think about that truth for a moment or two. It is the Holy Spirit who gives us faith and empowers us to speak. If that is the case, the question, where was the Holy Spirit before Pentecost? 
Were there no Holy Spirit in the house of in the hearts of believers before Pentecost? And if there was, then were, what was so special then about Pentecost? You know, we always ask ourselves these questions. Of course, know this. The Holy Spirit has always been working in the world. And I'll take you back to the second verse of the Bible in the book of Genesis that shows the Holy Spirit hovering over the waters, already active in creating and preserving the world. King David prayed in Psalm 51, Lord, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Recognizing that it is the Holy Spirit that gives us a relationship with God. Everyone who believed in Jesus while he walked the earth, the blind man who called out Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And Thomas who exclaimed, my Lord, my God. All these people believed in Jesus Christ because the Holy Spirit had worked faith in their heart. Scripture says in 1 Corinthians 12, 3, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. So then, if the Holy Spirit was already working in the hearts of believers, why did Jesus promise to send the counselor, the Holy Spirit? And what was so special about Pentecost? Simply this, on the day of Pentecost, God poured out his Holy Spirit upon the people in a display of power and special gifts in a way that the world had never seen before. They had never seen such awesome display of power. And yes, the disciples believed before Pentecost. And yes, their faith was a gift from the Holy Spirit, but their faith was young. Their faith was immature. It was not their faith was not complete. And now on the day of Pentecost and in the days of the early Christian church, God confirmed their faith with miraculous signs and powerful miracles. But the Holy Spirit did not just strengthen and confirm their faith just for the sake of it. Our God empowered them to speak and to tell and to testify about Jesus Christ. The question can we say the same thing? We believe and therefore we speak boldly in the name of Jesus Christ. That's a question for us. Where did our faith come from? Another question. And I will give you the answer. It came from the Holy Spirit. It was a gift of God's life-giving spirit that brought you and me out of death and darkness and gave us life and light. The Spirit testifies to our hearts, not through feelings or dreams or visions or instinct, but through the living and powerful Word of God. Right there, right there in the Bible, it's a testimony of God's Spirit. Right there, right here, God speaks to us. God brought to us to faith through His Word. God has fed our faith through His Word. God confirms our faith through his word. But God does just not bring us to faith so that we can just sit on our hands and say, well, Lord, thank you. Now I'm saved. I'm good to go. Beam me up one day to heaven because I'll just confess my faith. Well, as we all know, it's much more to it than that. The Lord Jesus has work for us to do. And it is for that purpose that we are allowed to live each and every day on this earth. Because after we come to faith, we have the awesome privilege and responsibility to talk about our faith and to share our faith with others. We believe and speak boldly in Jesus' name. The Holy Spirit empowers us to do both. 
The same Peter in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, who preached on Pentecost, wrote to believers everywhere, you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Also, you know the words that Jesus left with disciples in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. Go and make disciples. Go and make disciples. In our scripture, Jesus says, and you also must testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. So also is Jesus speaking to us in his word today. Have we shared our faith story last week? Have we shared it or talked with someone in the last month or two or three? Think about it, my friends, and think about it carefully. Why are we here on this earth? What is our purpose in life? If it is not to be a witness for Christ, then what is it? To feather our nest with fluff and stuff? To collect more and more possessions? And build more shelf space like I did this past week in the carport? <laughs> To retire fat and happy, to see the world? Think about it carefully, because the answers to the questions I am asking defines who we are as Christians, who we are as human beings. To come to faith ourselves and trust in Jesus and be saved, to share our faith with friends and family, to instruct our children to walk with Jesus. These are the heart and core of our purpose and our existence as Christians. Everything else is meaningless. Now I understand what Jesus asked of us. Jesus says in our text, you must also testify. Nowhere does Jesus say, you will be my lawyers. It is not our job to argue or debate with people about Jesus Christ. Jesus does not call us to mix it up with people or get in their face. Jesus does not say we will be his salesperson. We do not have to sell Jesus. We do, not, we do not have to persuade people to sign on the dotted line. We do not have to close the deal. That is not our job. Jesus simply says, you will be my witness. So what do we do to be a witness? All we have to do is tell what we've seen. Tell what we have experienced. Tell people what Jesus did for us. How Jesus rescued us from the blackest darkness, from a lifetime of emptiness and despair, from an eternity of hell. Jesus died on the cross for us. Jesus washed us clean. So, I'm not saying, but I already know what some people are thinking. They're saying, yeah, but Irving, you don't have a problem talking to people. I'm a little bit afraid to do that, then know this. Do what Jesus tell us about that. Jesus said in Luke chapter 12, verses 11 and 12, do not worry about it. When you are brought before the synagogue, rulers and authorities, do not worry about how you will defend yourselves or what you will say. For the Holy Spirit will teach you at that time what you should say. And Father, if you feel too ashamed, to speak boldly about Jesus. He says very, very clearly in Luke chapter 9, verse 26, if anyone is ashamed of me, in my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his glory and in the glory of the Father and of the whole angels. And if we find ourselves feeling that sharing Jesus is someone else's job, well, that's what they got the preachers for then pray that the Lord will come with his grace and restore your focus on your relationship with Christ and what it means. Pray for the spirit to overcome a weak and double-minded heart so that he can use each and every last one of us for a noble purpose in his kingdom. You see, my friends, we believe and speak boldly in Jesus' name. 
Speaking and believing go hand in hand. The faith of our hearts cannot be constrained. It has to spill over into our lives and into the lives of people who surround us. The growth of God's kingdom comes from people sharing their faith and telling about Jesus. You see, when you know something good, especially something good about Jesus, especially about what Jesus is doing in your life, we must share it. That is all God is asking us to do. Testify to what you have seen, to what God has done in your life. Tell them about your experiences. And now as I close, Jesus said in Luke chapter 11, 13, if you know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Pray for the Holy Spirit. Pray to the God. Pray to God for his spirit in greater measure. Ask God for a heart that is passionate about Jesus Christ. Ask God to restore your focus and renew your zeal for Jesus Christ. Ask God for the Holy Spirit and power to love, power to share, power to proclaim the one Savior, the one Lord, whose blood has cleansed us to be people of God. May the Holy Spirit, who fired up the hearts of the disciples, set our hearts on fire to believe and speak boldly in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Just perhaps, just perhaps my message touched someone in a special way. In a way so special that if you want now to give your life to Jesus, then simply repeat this message with me. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you will be saved because it is with your heart that you believe and are justified and it is with your mouth that you confess your faith. And it's just that simple, right, Pastor Bell? You are saved. And now as I bring this Pentecost worship service to a close, the God who made this amazing universe is creating us anew every day. Jesus Christ, the resurrected one, offers us peace that never dies. The Holy Spirit is setting our hearts on fire right here, right now. So go in peace, believe, and speak boldly in Jesus' name that we may change, that we may change this world. Amen.